Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we'd like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy standard S-Flex Endurance bushing style coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. Please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy Coupling Installation Guide when performing the installation of this coupling. This document can be found online at Lovejoy's website by visiting the Resources page and clicking on Installation Instructions and Videos. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout tagout procedure defined by OSHA. You should have the following components before installing your Lovejoy S-Flex Endurance Style Coupling. You should have two flange style hubs with tapered bores to accept the bushings, two QD or taper lock bushings, and a sleeve. Note that Lovejoy offers flanges bored to accept QD or taper lock bushings. However, Lovejoy does not supply either type of bushing. You should purchase the required bushings before installation. Always inspect the components to ensure you've received the proper parts and coupling necessary to accommodate your application requirements. If the shaft and the bushing both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the bushing to transmit the maximum allowable torque. It is always recommended to keep a copy of the specific coupling installation guide readily available when installing your Lovejoy coupling. The installation guide contains charts that show the necessary details including allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings for tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain performance and dimensional information important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A straight edge, calibrated torque wrench, Allen socket to fit the set screws, socket for the hex head screws, vernier calipers, lockout tagout kit, and safety glasses. Other recommended supplies you might need include a dial indicator, a micrometer to confirm the shaft sizes, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, and rubberized gloves. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure that the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Then inspect the shaft and clean off any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft diameter. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hub and flanges should also be cleaned to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Before installing the bushing and flange, place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly into the keyway with no side-to-side -side movement. The end of the key should line up with the end of the shaft and the bushing once the bushing is installed. Slide the bushings into the S-Flex flanges and rotate each bushing until the holes line up with the tapped holes in the flanges. 
Insert the three hex head screws with lock washers into the bushings and hand tighten until the washers touch the face of the bushing. The assemblies can now be placed on the shafts. Please note that QD bushings are manufactured with a clearance or slip fit and should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. Standard QD bushings have three retaining bolts. Each bolt should be tightened evenly using the industry standard procedure. With a calibrated torque wrench, tighten each bolt first to 50% of the specified torque, then 75%, then to the final torque as specified in the installation guide. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the retaining bolts are not tightened properly, the bushing and flange could work loose and slide on the shaft. If the retaining bolts are too tight, they could damage the key, shaft, bushing, or flange. We will tighten the set screws in one flange to the required torque, then lightly tighten the set screws in the second flange to allow for possible axial adjustment after the equipment is moved into place. If the sleeve is a split type, it could be installed with the equipment in place and one or both hubs slid back to provide clearance. Split sleeves tend to be ideal for sleeve replacement when it is not desirable to move the equipment. When tight, there should be a gap of approximately one eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch between the face of the flange and the face of the bushing. If the bushing is drawn completely into the flange without clamping on the shaft, then it indicates there is a problem with the flange, bushing, or actual shaft diameter. This issue will need to be resolved before continuing. Next we will insert the sleeve into one of the flanges. If the sleeve is solid, or a one-piece sleeve, the sleeve will need to be mounted into one of the flanges prior to moving the equipment into place. With the sleeve inserted in the first flange, carefully move the equipment into position until the sleeve barely comes into contact with the face of the second flange. Do not press the flanges together against the sleeve where you can inhibit some of the coupling's ability to accommodate misalignment. If necessary, the retaining bolts can be loosened on one of the flanges to allow for minor axial adjustments. If the sleeve is a split type, the sleeve could be installed with the equipment in place and one or both flanges slid back to provide clearance. Split sleeves tend to be ideal for sleeve replacement when it is not desirable to move the equipment. To check the basic alignment, Start by laying a straight edge across the major diameter of the flanges. The maximum allowable parallel offset should not exceed the amount for your particular coupling size found in the installation guide and shown here. Using calipers, measure the distance between the outside faces of the flanges as close as possible to the edge of the flange. It is recommended to take this measurement at four different locations around the coupling. Three o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. All of the measurements should fall within the range of X min and X max on the chart shown here. The maximum difference between any of these measurements should not exceed the value listed in the column labeled angular. Note that the angular misalignment should not exceed one degree for EPDM and neoprene sleeves or a quarter of a degree for hydrol sleeves. If the alignment falls outside these parameters, you may need to move the second hub or realign the equipment to correct this condition. If using a dial indicator, mount the indicator on the driver's shaft with the sensor touching the flange on the opposite shaft. Rotate the shaft with the indicator to the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock positions and make notes of the deviation on the dial. If the deviation exceeds the value in the column labeled angular, adjust the equipment to correct this condition. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the set screw and spacer bolt tightness, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. The equipment can then be started up and tested. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. 
If vibration is detected, it could indicate that there is an issue with alignment or other problems. These could exist in the motor, coupling, or driven equipment and should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy. Building trust since 1900.